Sup, bitches? I mean, hey everyone, it's Christina, and today we're going to make green juice. Uh, so, a couple days ago on my channel, I had um, tried following a Fully Raw Christina green juice recipe, um, and I couldn't for the life of me find the recipe after the fact. Like, I kind of remembered what was in it, but I couldn't find the recipe. And the, I found out why I couldn't find it, and the reason is because it was from, not from a recipe video or a green juice video, but it was from a what I eat in the day. So, now that I've found that video, I figured I'm going to recreate the entire day. So, uh, Fully Rare Christina, she does start her day uh, with um, a nice, leisurely uh, hot yoga session. Now, I have a day job. Uh, however, it is the weekend, so I could have done that, uh, except for I had a skin treatment a couple days ago, and I'm not supposed to... Um, go in saunas or sweat or do any intense exercise. So this morning I kind of laid in bed for a while and played on my phone and then I got up and watched YouTube for a bit. So I got that going for me, but it is now green juice time. Um, now uh, I'm gonna have to make this in my blender. I do own a uh, juicer, but a juicer, you have to have a really, really high-end juicer to be able to get through um, things like kale and parsley and romaine. Um, so uh, I know for a fact my juicer would die if I tried making this juice in my juicer. Uh, so I'm going to do it in my blender, and it might kill my blender. So um, thoughts and prayers for uh, Mr. Blunted here. Uh, so her recipe is one whole cucumber, two limes. Uh, now I only have one because I miscalculated some fresh turmeric, some fresh ginger, and an entire head of celery. And just because I'm using a blender and not a juicer, I'm going to add a little bit of water just to make sure it blends at the beginning. So next she adds a couple leaves of romaine and an entire bunch of parsley. Now keep in mind that because of the turmeric, this is going to stain anything it touches. And the final ingredient is four or five leaves of kale, which as it turns out is just a bunch of kale. And now I'm going to squeeze this through a nut milk bag. Um, this is clean. It's just stained, especially because this juice recipe has turmeric in it and turmeric stains everything. Um, so uh, if you have a good nut milk bag, it'll probably be made from nylon and it's just nylon happens to be very, very receptive to absorbing colors. So um, yeah, this is perfectly clean. Okay, so this is how much juice I have. Now keep in mind, I did add some water. Um, but Jesus Christ, that is a lot of juice to drink. And this is how much waste there is. Like, honestly, why don't you just eat the vegetables and get the fiber? Fiber is good for you. Although, to be fair, eating that many vegetables would be a chore, so I kind of understand where the juicing thing comes in. So, I can't believe Fully Raw Christina goes through this every morning. Granted, she has, like, a nanny and a juicer and all of that shit, but, like... I can't imagine drinking this much juice. It doesn't taste good. And I know the saying is that, oh, it's not supposed to taste good, it's green juice, it's for your health. But holy fuck, there are so many healthy foods that could potentially taste good. Why would you have this? So I'm almost done with my green juice, and honestly, it's not as bad as um, the last time I tried this recipe, and I think the main difference is last time I used cilantro, this time I'd used parsley, and I think the parsley balances the acidic better, or I don't know, maybe it's just that I used more water in this one, but it's a lot more tolerable. I mean, it's not good, but also like it's not making me gag. I guess beyond the taste, the main uh, observation I have about this is that it's a lot of liquid. Um, so uh, 32 ounces is one liter, which is like this size. It's really hard to polish this off. So like I'm assuming she's like nursing it through her morning, which is kind of like what I'm trying to do. But at the same time, like, I don't know, like 
I just, I don't want to be drinking this anymore. Like I've had enough. Like, can I have something else? Okay. So it is lunchtime and yes, I put a sweater on cause I'm fucking freezing. Um, and it's about to get a whole lot colder in here. So, uh, fully raw Christina, she makes a, uh, smoothie bowl with bananas, berries, and coconut water. And honestly, as you know, first world self-indulgent and wasteful, I feel the green juice was, this to me is like a practical cost effective way to get like a lot of, um, produce into your diet. Okay. So here I've got four bananas and honestly watching her video, I think she used like way more than four or five bananas. And then I really like that number one, she used frozen fruit and she didn't specify what type it was. So this is kind of like giving me the freedom to use like whatever I had. This is just frozen strawberry. Um, because, um, if you're not like stuck, like following an exact recipe, you can just use what's seasonal. This is, this is the problem I have though. She uses coconut water as the blending medium, but if you are fully raw, you are not using canned coconut water, um, which like even canned coconut water is kind of expensive. You're using fresh coconut water. This stuff is expensive AF. Like I have these coconuts cause they were to me a reasonable, pr reasonable price, but that was $2. So $2 to get like a bit of blending is kind of um, unrealistic. Oh my God, that's the good stuff. Strawberry banana ice cream. But like, honestly, the coconut adds nothing. You can't taste coconut. It doesn't add any saltiness. It's just, it's there and you could have used water for cheap. Uh, so fully raw Christina uses some sort of like serving bowl, salad bowl to eat hers out of. I don't have anything like that. So I'm just going to use like a pie dish. So fully raw Christina, she garnished hers with strawberries, cacao nibs, uh, dried mulberries and blueberries. Um, and I was thinking I would do exactly that. But number one, when I went to buy groceries, uh, blueberries were $7 a pound. So I was like, no, I don't need blueberries this week. I'll just do everything else. Now, um, I figured today I'm just going to go to Bulk Barn and I can get the mulberries and the uh, cacao nibs and then we can kind of like figure out how much exactly those cost. Except for I don't want to go across town to buy a freaking garnish because it is cold right now um, and I'm about to be colder. So I'm just going to kind of like use what I have, like arbitrarily expensive shit. So I've got some passion fruits. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen Fully Rough Christina eat a passion fruit, but it's one of my favorite things, but they're kind of expensive, so I don't have them often. And then she used cacao nibs, but like the only thing I have that I can think that would go on this with that would be crunchy is I've got some almonds. So yeah, this is not exactly what Fully Rough Christina ate, but I really don't want to have to go out to buy things that are um, just to be used as a garnish. Oh, one thing I just completely glossed over because like I knew from the outset I would not be buying it are the Four Sigmatic powders. So she uses the Four Sigmatic protein powder and then two of their like supplement powders. And Jesus Christ, that stuff is so expensive. Hello friends, so it is dinner time now and I've spent the last 45 minutes prepping these veggies. Um, now I do want to say collard greens where I live are specialty produce. So these were $3.99 for a bunch that included five leaves and like I really had to dig to find ones that weren't cracked or torn in any way so I could do wraps. So what I've got here is I've got my collard leaves, I've got red cabbage, tomato, bell pepper, mango. Uh, cucumber, beets, carrots, avocado, sprouts, and then this is uh, the dipping sauce. Um, I've just gone ahead and like pre-made it. Um, and instead of using um, tahini, because a jar of raw tahini is going to be like $12 or something, um, I've just gone ahead and blended um, almonds to make my own almond butter and um, then done everything else the same. It's kind of strong tasting. Because it's like nuts or nut butter, soy sauce, 
Now I'm gonna show you is soy sauce, but more expensive. I use regular soy sauce because I'm not buying a bottle of specialty soy sauce when I have regular soy sauce. Um, and the, the soy sauce and lime juice, and it's not diluted in any way. I ended up diluting mine just because, um, so it would blend better, but I think like taste-wise, it's better if you blend it. Um, so let's go ahead and make one of these collard wraps. So, it's basically just a little bit of veggies in each of them. So some cabbage, some tomato, a little bit of pepper, some mango. Like honestly, I think the mango is going to be the best part of this because there's no sweetness in the sauce. Um, some cucumber, some beet, some carrot, and some avocado. So I think this is going to be kind of like a California roll, but like not really because it's got the avocado in there. So let's wrap this up. She cuts hers in half, so I'm going to do that with mine. Not bad. I don't feel like there's like any nutrition and eating this is going to be weird, but let's try it. Oh, I forgot the sprouts. I'll put sprouts on the next one. Um, I think the sauce needs something sweet. Yeah, the, the wrap thing, okay, the collard is a bit tough and takes a bit getting used to, but it really doesn't overpower it flavor-wise. It's just a tougher texture than you'd be expecting if you're expecting like a nori roll or like a summer roll. But it's the sauce. The sauce is good, but needs sweet. Okay, so dinner is served. I'm not gonna cut them just because I figure it'll be easier to eat like this. So from a culinary perspective, I think I need to point out that this sauce is just super, super overpowering. But then because the wrap is so plain on its own, it really needs the salt and the fat from the dressing for this to be palatable. But then once you add the sauce, it's all you taste. So if I were to eat this again, I would do a completely different sauce. So the final amount I spent on food today was $35.77 Canadian dollars. Now keep in mind that is for non-organic and it did not include the uh, Four Sigmatic powders. If I included the Four Sigmatic stuff, it would have been $44.21. Um, now, uh, granted, I live in an area where um, food is generally a bit more expensive. I live in northern Alberta. Most things are imported here. Um, and granted, I also was trying to follow someone else's day of eating. I'm sure for Fully Raw Christina, um, when she eats in a day, she's eating, you know, what's on sale, what's in her fridge. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm not even angry at the cost of food. Like, uh, I'm pretty well off. I can buy stupid food if I want to. What annoys me is there's a lot of um, unacknowledged privilege beyond just the cost of food. So to make a juice, and specifically to make a green juice, you have to have a high-end juicer. You can't just buy any juicer from like Walmart. And you can't just buy like a secondhand one from a you know yard sale or whatever. You have to have a fairly high-end juicer to be able to get through greens uh, and to be able to get through vegetables without a ton of waste. So um, for me, that's like I could buy a juicer if it was a priority, but it's not a priority because I know I'm not going to green juice every morning and I know I'm never going to like get my investment back on an appliance that costs several hundred dollars. Um, 
the other thing is, um, now to make the banana and ice cream, uh, I just have a regular food processor. I think my food processor costs like 50 bucks and I use it all the time. Great investment. Uh, but she does hers in a high-end blender. Now, a lot of the things she does, you need to have a high-end blender for it. Uh, I have like a middle to high-end. I've got a blend tech. Um, so I'm okay on that front. But you you can't make all her recipes in a cheapo blender. You need a fairly nice blender, otherwise you're going to be eating grit or you're going to be breaking your blender all the time. Um, and the other thing is, I think she has a video in the past where she was talking about having like eight refrigerators in her house. Um, now, I live in an apartment and I have an apartment sized refrigerator and I don't have room for another refrigerator. That's not true, I do have a wine fridge. Uh, and I know like some people in the suburbs, it's fairly common that you've got your main fridge and then you might have a fridge in the garage for beer or like one in the basement for like extra food and stuff um, if you're a family. But r realistically, for one day of eating, my fridge was completely full. Like I needed so much stuff on hand. Uh, so like I, for me, I'm not angry at the cost of the food I bought. I'm angry that to live her lifestyle, you can't just do it casually. You have to actually commit to owning certain appliances and like you have to be in a privileged position where you have space for that, where you have money for that. Um, the second issue I have is with the calories. I believe my calories are 1893. Sorry, I didn't write it down. So I don't actually have it in front of me. Um, so 1893, which um, sounds like enough calories. However, raw foods, you do not fully digest. So there have been some estimates that when you're eating raw food as opposed to cooked food, uh, and especially whole food, raw foods, um, you're potentially absor uh, only absorbing maybe like uh, two thirds of the calories or half the calories. So I would guess that fully raw Christina is um, not, not fully digesting those, you know, almost 1900 calories. I forget the number I just said. Uh, I will have a screenshot of how, what the nutrition was. So she says that she's lost the weight recently by switching to intermittent fasting and not cutting down her calories, but I tracked the calories very, very accurately. I'm like a pro at tracking calories. Um, and she was only coming up at 1900 calories and because it's raw food, you're not digesting them all. Um, and my day included like a lot of almonds because like I didn't have the cacao nibs, I didn't have the mulberries. So I kind of like substituted for like just random almonds that I had in my pantry. But, um, so I got a lot of calories that way, but Fully Raw Christina didn't have the almond. She had uh, cacao nibs, um, but cacao nibs are not as calorie dense as uh, almonds. So, um, and I believe she used yes, less than I did. So, um, yeah, she says she's lost the weight through intermittent fasting and has not reduced her calories, but uh, I believe her weight right now is a reflection not of like intermittent fasting, but of, you know, you know, not eating enough calories, which, you know, it's fine. If she wants to be thin, she's allowed to be thin. People can eat how they want, but um, don't lie and say that you're eating like 3000 calories a day and doing like uh, exercise when really you're just not digesting your food fully. Um, other observations. So you know what? I didn't have any problem whatsoever. No di digestive distress. Everything kind of went through smoothly. Um, even the raw collards with like raw cabbage was fine. Um, but I've, I've never really particularly had a problem digesting raw cabbage. Um, I felt great and, and my poops did not smell. So, um, yeah, that's it. I ate like fully raw Christina for a day. It was stupid expensive and your farts were lit literally smell like roses in the end. Thank you for watching.